are merely vessels, God. You do what you want to do, Lord. We want anything you have for us, Lord. We want a powerful move of your glory tonight, Lord. May tonight, may we leave here marked, marked with your glory, my God. May we leave here different, Lord. May we leave here changed, my God. Marked for more, marked for revival, my God. Lord, we come together, City Reach Church, and we just want to praise you tonight. We want to give you the glory tonight. We want your name to be the greatest, highest name lifted in this house tonight, Lord. We lift up your name. We lift up the name of Jesus. There is no other name like the name of Jesus. All powerful. No other name makes the demons tremble. No other name sets the captive free. No other name breaks chains and curses. We lift up the name of Jesus in this house tonight. Come on, City Reach, lift up the name of Jesus. We say Jesus.
Preparing the way for Jesus. We're making room for you. Tell them we're making room for you tonight. Oh, we're preparing the way. Oh, preparamos un lugar para ti, Señor. Preparamos el camino para ti, Señor. We're preparing the way. We're preparing the way. We get out of the way. We get out of the way. Oh, we want more of you and less of us. More of you and less of us. Oh, we want to die. Oh, we want to die. Oh, you come alive. We want to be swallowed by life. Swallowed in life, Jesus. Oh, oh, we prepare the way. All blessing and honor. All blessing and honor. All blessing and honor. Dominion and power. is yours all power dominion oh sovereign life lift up your voice right there oh ya rabba shete ke rabba basea ya na 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 kote re re beshea oh re te te ke atara basea oh we prepare the way we prepare the way holy spirit come Spirit, come. Take your righteous place, Jesus. Kiara 
Come on, let's decrease so he may increase right here. Let's decrease so he may increase right here. Come on, I sense a little bit of distraction in the room tonight. Let's set our eyes on the creator of heaven and earth. Let's set our eyes on the king of glory. Come on, we set distractions aside. Lord, we came for you. We set even our needs right now, we set them aside. We're here for you to give you the glory, to give you the honor. Anything else can win. Anything else can win, but you must be praised, you must be worshipped, everything else can win, everything else can be set aside, but you must be lifted high, you must be lifted high, everything else can win, everything else can be set aside. You alone, but you are mine. You must be worshipped. You must be honored. You must be lifted high. Yeah, everything else can wait. Everything else can be set aside. But you alone, we lift high.
Lord, we surrender all to you tonight, my God. We surrender everything to you. We surrender everything to you, Lord. We join in one voice, one sound right here. And we say we surrender. We say we'll decrease so you may increase in us, my God. We want to be more like you, less of us, my God. More like you, less of us, Lord. If we may be so bold to say none of us and all of you, my God. We want to be just like you, Lord. We want to be more like you, my God. None of us and all of you. None of us and all of you, Lord. We surrender everything to you. the way for the king who is to come, the Lion of Judah. We just say, shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. You're always better, you're always better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. You're always better. He always better. Come on, can you make this your cry tonight? Break down the walls, Lord. All we want is your way. Shake up the ground. Break down the 
sound of an awakening. I hear the thunder, I hear the rattling. I see a nation come from the sound of. That's more than enough 
in all things may have an abundance for every good work. That means unrestricted. That means unhindered. That means whatever God wants me to do, I'll be able to finance it without restriction. That means whatever God has for you to do, whatever you put your hands to in the kingdom, you'll be able to do it without restriction. Without the way, how am I going to pay for it? How, are, how is it going to be provided for? Without restriction. This is the word of God. This is the promise of God. All sufficiency. Say, I can have all sufficiency. I'm a child of God. It's my right because I've entered into an inheritance when I became blood bought and blood washed. I stepped in to another economy, God's economy. And in that economy, I have everything I need and more to do what he's asking me to do. Verse 11. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, abundance, and fullness, which causes, that means you're the instrument. That means I'm the instrument. Thanksgiving through us to God. There's a purpose when finances go through my life. I'm an instrument in the hand of God. I'm an instrument in the hand of God. When I release what I've received from him in the area of finances. It makes people thank God. That's what the word says. It makes people look to God. It makes people realize when they are reached through some seed I've sown, oh, there is a reward in heaven. It points people to Jesus. Every time you sow a seed into the mission field, every time you sow a seed into the work of the ministry, it's making people, it's allowing people, it's pointing people to Jesus. That's a reward for you. That's a reward for me. There's multiple rewards when I sow seed. Not only does it advance the gospel, but it multiplies back to us, yes? That's what a seed does. That's what an offering does. The tithe opens the windows, but an offering multiplies back to you and to me. Psalm 115, 14. May the Lord give you increase more and more and more and more. Not for you to hold, but for God to get it through you to advance this gospel message. So God, here tonight, I thank you that you're raising up kingdom financers. I thank you, Father, that your children are stepping into places of inheritance to access kingdom wealth, to access finances for your children stored up for us for this very season. I thank you that even now faith is rising in the room. Faith is rising in your children. Faith is rising to every giver online. Faith is rising that we know our rightful place as children, as heirs. We thank you, God, that we know who our daddy is and that he owns it all. We thank you, God, that we're positioned beneath open windows to receive of a flow of finances so that you can get it through us to the ends of the earth to be reached for our children to be reached, for the next generation to be reached, so we can carry revival fire everywhere we go, so this gospel message can go into the highways and the byways, into the far-reaching corners of the earth. I thank you, God, that you're raising up a people that have the faith for it, that have established integrity, financial integrity, that have been faithful, that you can trust with great wealth. I thank you, you're a good father. You provide for your children. So I pray over every faithful tither and everyone sowing seed here tonight, increase them more and more and more. We cancel all debt. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. We take dominion over debt. We cancel it tonight. I pray increase more and more and more in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Ushers, you can receive tonight. Our pastor sends his love. If you've been here for the past couple of services, you know that he is in the Amazon.
with a wonderful team from this church. We're going to go back there in December for a mission trip. They're spying out the land while they're there. Mighty miracle signs and wonders are taking place. Many souls are getting saved in this glorious gospel is going into remote villages where the name of Jesus is not known. And that's a miracle. And that's a powerful step of obedience connected to the heart of God for all the nations. So let's give our pastor some honor. Let's thank him. He'll be back here on Wednesday. And if you'll stand to your feet for one more moment, can we welcome the woman of God who is delivering the word tonight, Pastor Sarah. She blesses us. We thank God for her. Oh, you know if that was for me, you can do better for Jesus. Yeah. Oh, come on, come on. He's a true champion. Oh. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. We're going to lift up our voices, and we are going to give Jesus Christ our true champion the highest praise in this house. Oh. Hallelujah! Oh. It's all about Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel his presence all over this building. Um, I don't know if... Um, um, I need your help, a little team up there. Do you have the Passion Translation? I, I want to release a scripture here in the Passion. It's a TPT, the Passion Translation, Psalm 149. I, I just love what God is saying there. Uh, and I want to release it in this house. And um, I just want you to know that the people that are here tonight, you're Jesus lovers. Okay, you all don't get that. <laughs> Do I have some Jesus lovers? And, and, and when you're a Jesus lover, you know, he gives you a privilege and an anointing to do some things in the realm of the spirit. You are warriors. And, and with the warrior anointing, that comes with Jesus lovers, your praise begins to execute vengeance against the enemy and to break shackles in the realm of the spirit. Just your shout and your praise begins to break things in the spirit realm. Masakatolaba. Do, uh, do you have it? Do, do they have it? I really wanted you to read it for yourselves. But um, while they're finding it, the Passion Translation, Psalm 149, says, Hallelujah. That's the highest praise. And it says, Praise the Lord. It's time to sing to God a brand new song. Come on. So that all his holy people will hear how wonderful he is. May Israel be enthused with joy because of him. And may the sons of Zion pour out their joyful praises to their king. Break forth with Come dancing. Hey. Make music and sing God's praises with the rhythm of the drums. Listen, for he enjoys his faithful lovers. Come on. Hey. Hey. Do I have some faithful lovers in here? Hey. He enjoys his faithful lovers. When you dance and when you shout and when you praise him, he enjoys his faithful hey. lovers. Hey. And then he says, he adorns the humble with his beauty, and he loves to give them victory. His godly lovers triumph in the glory of God, and their joyful praises will rise 
even while others are sleeping. Hey. <laughs> oh, let me hear your hey. praise rise. Hey. Yeah. Verse 6, God's high and holy praises will fill their mouths, for their shouted praises are their weapons of war. Hey. Didn't hear you tell the other person, Did you know that I'm a weapon in the hand of God? My praise is a weapon, my shout is a weapon. Oh, God, it says, These warring weapons will bring vengeance on the nations and every resistant power. Oh my God, did you hear that? Every resistant power. When you praise him as his lover and you shout as his lover, every resistance has got to back off. Every opposition has got to back down. Open your mouth and release your weapon. This is getting better, Pastor Natalie. And he says in verse 8, to bind kings with chains and rulers with iron shackles. Praise filled warriors will enforce the judgment decreed against the enemies. This is the honor he gives to his godly lovers. You don't come with sword 
or with spear or with shield. But you come in the name of the Lord. in your shout people and I'm gonna go to the word I don't intend to preach long because I just going I just believe the Holy Spirit is gonna do what he knows to do and we want to give him permission tonight to just be who he is can we do that tonight but I just want to know I want to let you know that Jesus is simply looking for lovers can you just simply be a Jesus lover are you hearing me? Because when you love Jesus, everything, nothing is off limits. When you love Jesus, you give yourself selflessly. When you love Jesus, everything you do, you do it because you simply love Jesus. I believe Mary said something that was so powerful. And she said, he or she that has been forgiven much, loves much. See, I think that is one of the most profound scriptures in the entire Bible. You can always tell people that are madly in love with Jesus. You know why? Because they have been forgiven much. They have been forgiven much. They, they reflect and reminisce every day that Jesus, you didn't have to do this, but you did. And so what shall I render unto you for the great and amazing and wonderful things you've done for me except to lift up the cup of salvation and to declare you to my generation. Nothing I do can ever repay you. And so I give myself to you. I offer my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Use me for your glory because he or she that has been forgiven much loves much. When God has done so much for you, 
It is nothing to bring your alabaster box and break it at his feet. It is nothing because you've done so much for me. I'm, I can't withhold anything because you've done so much for me. And so this evening, I sense that this room is full of just Jesus lovers. Just warriors for Jesus. People that are saying, God, my praise, my shout is a weapon that when I, when I release it, you, you bind the shackles of kings and nobles and every resistance has to back off. Every opposition has to back down because I'm a Jesus lover. Let's give the Lord one more shout in this house. And we celebrate your apostle, your pastor, God's apostle. <laughs> you know, Paul always wrote and he said, I, Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your pastor, but he is God's apostle. And so we celebrate him tonight. Pastor Brian, my brother from another mother. <laughs> we celebrate you. Put those hands together as we celebrate God's apostle, your pastor, in his absence. We love him. We're praying for him. The nations are waiting. God told him prophetically, Ask me for the nations. And God is giving him nations. Not to his benefit, but to the glory of God. To the glory of God. And we thank God for his life, amen. And of course, to his beautiful wife, Pastor Natalie. Oh, come on, come on. I know you can do better than that. Let's celebrate this amazing woman of God. This firebrand for Jesus. Hey! You know, she's my kind of people. <laughs> she's my kind of people. You know, she's, she's just a Jesus lover. It's real simple. You know, I hang around Jesus lovers. You know, and it's so refreshing when you can find people that simply love Jesus. We love you, Pastor Natalie. God bless you richly and increase you more and more. You and your children in Jesus' name. I hear the Lord say, woman of God, that he is bringing you into a new season. And the season that God is bringing you into is a season called Rehoboth. That God is making room for you. God is making room for you. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 26, and Isaac continued to redig the wells and the final well was dug and the Lord said, call this place Rehoboth, for I have now made room for you. The Lord says prepare yourself, woman of God because you are about to step into the season of more room. More room. Your capacity is being increased. Your influence is about to be enlarged. Say if the spirit of the living God, you are coming into a new season of Rehoboth, where God is making room. Making room to accommodate everything that you have in his heart, in your heart, concerning the kingdom. And God says, your cry has been, Lord, I need room. I need capacity. What am I going to do? And the Lord says, you have stepped into that season. And God says, I've enlarged your tent. I've strengthened your cords. I've fortified your stakes. 
and I have made room for you to fulfill everything that he has put in your heart, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Why don't you clap those hands and give God some praise? Oh, come on. Clap those hands and give God some praise. Do I have some Jesus lovers in here? man of God as, as we were standing here this morning the Lord began to speak to me concerning you step, take one step forward take another step forward and the Lord said that even as you've stepped forward the Lord says I've stepped forward concerning you I see in you a special equipment he says I have equipped you with special equipment According to Ephesians 4, where he says, And he gave gifts unto men, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the body, for the enlarging and equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry I see as you took those two steps the Lord just took two steps for you I see curriculum is coming out of you I see a school Zandu you will equip many saith the Lord for the work of the ministry and the Lord says I will give you the strategy I will show you the how. I will give you the capacity and the insight that out of you will come curriculums that generations yet unborn will be equipped from, saith the Spirit of the living God. And you will leave a print in your generation that many were equipped for the work of the ministry, saith the Spirit of the living God. This the Lord confers upon you tonight in the name of Jesus by the Son of the living God. And there is a fire that comes upon you in the name of Jesus. A fire comes upon your tongue. The spirit of revelation to equip a people, to empower a people, to teach a people how to do the work of the ministry. Receive it. Give God a shout of praise. Give God a shout. Glory to God. Let's lift those hands and let's worship the Lord. We're going we're gonna to go to the word this evening. I feel a very strong prophetic prophetic unction that is flowing in this room. I hear the Lord say to this house that from here on, God will have the final say. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. I said from here on, God will have the final say. From here on, God will have the final say. There is no spirit, no power, no witch, no wizard, no warlock, no sorcerer, no enchanter or diviner that will have the final say. From here on, the word of God will have the final say. And you will know, and you will understand, and you will consider together that the hand of the Lord has done this. For it is a new day, it is a new season, when many sons and daughters are going to be birthed in this place. Many sons and daughters 
that are going to carry the mandate and the mantle of this house. Say at the spirit of the living God. For revival begins at the threshold and revival begins in the throne room. That even as you release the worship of the throne room, the Lord says, I am birthing many sons and daughters. Many sons and daughters. I see them coming from afar. 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 Sons and daughters coming from afar. Coming from afar. Coming from afar. And God says, you will see this. You will experience this. You will encounter this. And you will know that I, the Lord your God, I am in your midst, saith the Spirit of the living God. It is a new day. It is a new season. Sayeth the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord says, from here on, they will have the final say. They will have the final say. Lift your hands just for a moment. They will have the final say in this house. They will have the final say. They will have the final say. Mazaka te laba. Eke la mroso kolema. They will have the final say. Just open your mouth and pray in the spirit for a minute. He will have the final say. He will have the final say. Kala ba zeke derea. Jike la la ma zoko darabaha. Thank you, Lord. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. It's you. It's you that I love. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. It's you that I serve. It's you that I serve. Lift your voices and just begin to pray in the spirit. 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 Eke ala masia. Zina kanti yele de mondia. Kila mandi yele de omo sendia. Ela masondia andi ala makosea. Ziela maki yele de monde onde yaman. Rakamande de de andolololomondia. It's you that I love. It's you that I love. It's you that I love. Let that be your heart cry. Let that be your heart cry, Zion. It's you that I love. 
you that I serve. It's you that I love. It's you that I serve. Kala baba bari yeri yo shikata. Zemo konde kata yele bronde ramahaya. Kata la brande de de ashandarama. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God is doing something in this house already. You don't need to wait for me. He has full permission to be God. I think the church for too long has tried to put a constraint on God, and God is saying, you can't constrain me. Allow me. Give me permission. Let God arise. Let him. You have to let him. He says, let me arise. Moses prayed and he said, let God arise. And when you give God permission to arise, every enemy scatters. It's you that I love. It's you that I love. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. It's you that I love. It's you that I love. see that couple right there. Are you a couple? You. You. Are you a couple? I, I hear the Lord saying that there's healing that is coming to you. And healing is coming to your house. I, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying He has seen your tears and He has heard your cry. And the Lord says, I am coming to bring healing. And with that healing, the Lord says, restoration is coming. That much has been lost. But the Lord said, I allowed it for a season and I allowed it for a reason. That your hearts may be repostured back to me. That you may look to me and none other. And now the Lord says, the time has come when there will be great healing, great restoration coming to your house. And I hear the Lord says that everything that you lost, God is going to restore back to you a thousand times more. That even as restoration comes, he's going to take away your shame. And he's going to take away your reproach and your ignominy, saith the Spirit of the Lord. God has said it, it is so. And it cannot be otherwise, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And his zeal shall perform it. Hold the hand of your wife, sir. Is she your partner, your wife? Hold her hand. Because if two shall agree as touching anything, God says, I bring establishment. And today, even as you stand in this place, this is the house where the lovers of God are. God says, I am reestablishing you. In Jesus' name. Just lift those hands and worship. It's you that I love. It's you that I love. Shake la 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 ba. Come here, baby. (laughs) 
I hear the Lord says that he's a God who remembers and does not forget. That the labor of your hands and the labor of your love, God says your reward is coming quickly. And I hear the Lord say that the many tears that you have cried and the many petitions that you presented before him, the many times and the many seasons that you've had conversations with God and saying, God, when, 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 the Lord says the time is now. The time is now. The time is now. And the Lord says, I will do it and I am going to do it quickly. 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 I hear the Lord say, I will do it speedily. Swiftly. As a matter of fact, I hear him say, immediately. Oh God. Everyone that believes that God can do something immediately, lift your hands right now. I release the anointing of immediately all over this room. That whatever it is that you have believed God for, God is doing it for you right now. Immediately. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The Lord says that your heart will be glad. And you will be exceeding joyful when you see his goodness in the land of the living. The Lord says, I have not forgotten. You are not forgotten. I can never forget you. In the same way that a mother can never forget her dark child, the Lord says, so have I not forgotten you. Your reward is coming, and it is coming quickly, saith the Spirit of the Lord. I see you smiling. I see you dancing. And that is totally something that is outside of who you are. But because God is going to do it, and he's going to do it elaborately, <laughs> you will have no choice but to Rejoice and dance and laugh for the whole world to know that he has turned your sorrow into dancing. <laughs> Receive that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. God has said it, it is so, and it cannot be otherwise. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken, and his zeal shall perform it. Just lift those hands and worship the Lord. We're going to go to the word real quick. Praise God. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take your place. It's you that I love. 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 No foreign God can take. Lift your hands and sing it. No foreign God can take your place. No foreign God can take. God is doing what he is famous for. <laughs> you know, God does what he's famous for. We're only mouthpieces. But then we allow him to do what he's famous for. He's already doing it. How many of you can feel the presence of God? 
How many of you can sense the healing of God already working in your bodies right now in the name of Jesus? He will have the final say in this house, in this place, in this city. This house will be a beacon in this city. A light that can never be put out. The Lord says to tell you, you are unstoppable. Oh my God. Okay, y'all didn't hear that. The Lord said you are unstoppable. Come on, do I have some warrior lovers here that know that we are unstoppable? Nothing can stop what God has ordained in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go straight to the word that we're going to pray. Amen. I, I, I just felt a prophetic flow and I was given permission to flow, right? So I'm just flowing. But, but we started this morning by speaking about the importance of holding on to what God said. There is no spoken word from God that is without power. Not one word that God speaks is deficient or bankrupt of power. Why? Because the God that you and I serve is a God of power. All power belongs to God. So every word that is spoken by God carries power. And the power that God's word carries is the power of fulfillment. If God speaks something, it will come to pass. Why? Because Luke 1 37 says, for with God, nothing is ever impossible. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible with God, which means no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. There is, um, <laughs> there is a saying in Africa. You know where I come from. We have radical people. They're just radical like that. And they come up with all kinds of stuff. And I'm telling you, it works. <laughs> but there's something they say in Africa. What God cannot do does not exist. Okay. I I'm going to let that sink in. What God cannot do does not exist. In other words, everything in existence, God's word has the power to deal with it. I didn't get an amen. God's word is powerful. Why? Because Jeremiah 1.12, the Amplified says, then, then said the Lord to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Y'all didn't hear me. Did you just hear what, what God said? He said that my word is powerful because I just don't speak it. I just don't send it. I steward it when it's released. I monitor it when it's released. I'm watching over it when it's released to ensure that it does what it's been sent to do. And he not only watches over his word to perform it, 
the word of God says in the KJV that I will hasten. So God will do it quickly. Once he says it, God watches over it. And he doesn't do it slackingly. He does it hastily, quickly, immediately. Oh, my God. I will hasten my word to perform it. I am ready to perform it. I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. I am watching to make sure that my message to you comes true. God ensures that his message to you comes true. The Amplified, the message version says, God's message came to me, Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12. And he said, what do you see, Jeremiah? And I said, a walking stick, that's all. And God said, good eyes, I'm sticking with you. Didn't hear that. That when God releases his word, God sticks with you until that word comes into fruition. Touch your neighbor and say, who's sticking with you? Because you know, some folk are going to say something and then they abandon you, run away. But God says, I'm going to stick it out with you. Oh, you, you missed a good place to give God a shout. He said, I'm going to stick it out with you until that word is accomplished. Are you hearing me? And I'll make every word I give to you come true. Amen? I'm just going to read a few scriptures and we're going to pray. Isaiah 55, 6 and 11 to 11. The rain and snow come down and water the earth and cause the seeds to sprout and grow up and produce fruit. In the same way, God's word goes forth and produces good fruit. God's word always produces a result. Not just any result, but the exact result that God had for it. Tonight, get ready for the exact result that God's word has for you. God's word never returns to him void unless or without produce, useless or without producing any effect. But it accomplishes that which he pleases and purposes and it prospers in the thing for which it is sent. God is not a man. We talked about that this morning, that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? No matter what happens, God's word is irrevocable. It's irreversible. Once he releases it, it has no choice but to manifest. I didn't get an amen. The reason why Balaam could not curse Israel in Numbers 23 is because in Numbers 6, God had spoken to Moses to, to tell Aaron, the priest, that lift up your hands over these people and speak this blessing over them. In this manner, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine, to radiate, to glitter upon you. The Lord turn his face towards you and be gracious unto you. And grant you peace, shalom, saith the spirit of the living God. Do you know why God released that blessings in number six? Because God, who sees the end from the beginning, already saw numbers 23. When, 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 when Balaam, the diviner, would be paid to curse 
the people of God. But God released the word of blessing. And as long as the word of blessing was released, by the time Balaam showed up, it was too late. Tell the mother, say to your neighbor, too late. Oh, come on, talk to me like you got some power. Say, too late. Because if God had said it, it is so. And it cannot be otherwise. You can't curse what God has blessed. The blessing was already conferred. And God had released the blessing. It couldn't be revoked. So Balaam tried everything. He raised altars. He gave sacrifices. I don't know who I came to talk to. There are all kinds of altars that are being raised. Evil altars. Sacrifices are being made so that the people of God will be cursed. Not to succeed. Not to make it. But guess what? God has already said it. He said it. I believe it. He said it. It is done. Listen. They did all kinds of stuff. And God showed up. You know the interesting thing about Balaam, woman of God, is that when Balaam raised his evil altar and gave the sacrifices, God himself showed up and he said, whatever you're summoning, I'm going to overrule it and I'm going to override it because you're messing with the wrong people. And he told him, you cannot curse what I have blessed. And the blessing is irrevocable. It is irreversible. Somebody in here, lift your voice like a trumpet and give God a shout. He said it, and it is so. Turn around and say to your neighbor, I am curse proof. Oh, come on, talk to them like you got some power. Say, I am curse proof. Bring it on, devil, I am curse proof. You know why I'm curse proof? Because I'm blessed by God. And if God has said it, that settles it, period. There's nothing that an enemy can do that will turn around. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you have the power to condemn it. Somebody lift your voice and give God a shout. Said you can't curse what God has blessed. You are a little late, devil. Somebody say, too late, devil. If you really wanted to do something, you should have showed up in numbers five, or numbers three, or numbers two, or maybe numbers one. But unfortunately, you showed up after number six when the blessing was conferred over my family, over my children, over my ministry, over my destiny, over my purpose, over my finances. I am blessed! Every day the enemy is waging war to steal the promises of God concerning you, concerning your healing, concerning your prosperity, your breakthroughs. But God's word is final. I said God's word is final. When the enemy came to tempt Jesus, Jesus overcame the enemy by declaring what God has said. You overcome the enemy by declaring what God said. 
Jesus overcame the enemy by declaring what God said. And he said, it is written. It is written. And what is written is written. You can't change it. You can't alter it. You can't edit it. You can't modify it. What is written is written. The word of God is forever. Psalm 89, 34 says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Pastor told us this morning that God is a God of covenant. He will never break his covenant, nor will he alter the word that proceedeth out of his mouth. If God has said it, God will do it. I didn't get an amen. Amen. And so anytime the enemy comes against you, speak the word only. Be like the servant that came to Jesus and he understood the power of the word that God has spoken. And so when Jesus told him, go and I'm on my way, the servant said, I'm a man in authority, under authority. Speak the word only. You know why he said that? Because the servant understood that if God says it, that if God says it, it is so. If God said it, it is settled. If God said it, it is final. I didn't get an amen. Amen. And why is it important? And we're going to pray to hold on to the word of God because Hebrews 4 verse number 12 says for the word of God is quick it is powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart listen family Even as we get ready to leave out of the presence, out of this building, but not the presence of God, hold on to God's holy word. Hold on to the word. Because if God has said it, God will do it. If God has said it, it is so. It doesn't matter how long. Listen, people. It doesn't matter how long. Because God's calendar is not your calendar. But all you've got to do is hold on to the word. All I know is God said it. And if God said it, I'm going to hold fast to the word. And when I hold fast to the word of God, God will surely perform it. Luke 145 says, And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told of her by the Lord. There shall be a performance. Amen? So we're going to pray tonight according to this word. It's powerful because God has told us through many scriptures the infallible word of God, the unchanging word of God that his word will never pass away. He has told us that his word is dependable. It's reliable. You can take God's word to the bank. Trust me when I tell you. I've I've gone past the time and the season in ministry where I say things because I want to just stir up people's emotions. I speak the word from a place of conviction. I've tried it, I've proven it, and God's word is true. I said God's word is true. I'm a living testimony. I'm a living witness that when all hell breaks loose and you hold on to the word of God, the word of God will fight for you. The word of God will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. 
The word of God will uphold you. The word of God will strengthen you. The word of God will uphold you. The word of God, people of God, is the only thing that you can hold on to. People change. Seasons change. Times change. But his word will never change. His word will never change. And I release that in this house prophetically. And that the reason why his word will never change is because the word of God is tested. It's tried. It's been proven. Second Samuel 22, 31. As for God, his way is perfect. And the word of the Lord is tried. He is a shield to all those who trust and take refuge in him. For God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tested, is tried. Nobody wants to try something that hasn't been tested. Nobody wants to risk their life with something that hasn't been tested. But I stand here to tell you that God's word has been tested. It's been proven and it stands strong forever. Somebody give God a shout. I want to show you how to activate the word and then we're going to pray. How do you activate the word? You activate the words by Romans 10 verse number 8 and 9. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in your mouth and in your heart. Pastor Sarah, I thought the word didn't know. He says the word is close even in your mouth and in your heart with your heart you believe and with your mouth you confess when you hear the word believe with your heart confess with your mouth for the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So the word of faith is in your mouth. What do I do with it, Pastor Sarah? Confess it. Confess it. Stop speaking what TikTok is telling you. Stop saying what Facebook is saying. I mean, and I'm not saying everybody, but there's too many voices out there. There are too many alternative voices that are saying this and saying that. But God is saying, speak the word. Speak the word that is nigh to you in your mouth and in your heart. So when the enemy comes against you, just speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Don't speak what some, somebody just said. I was watching uh, a video my daughter sent me the other day, Miss, uh, Pastor Natalie, and uh, some, 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 I don't even know. And they were like, you know, you take water and put this and then put this powder in there. And when you drink the water, this and this is going to happen. And I said to my daughter, I said, have you lost your minds? I said, why would you want to do that? Do you even know what they're telling you to put in that water? Okay. <laughs> Hello, yes, somebody. I'm just saying, there are so many voices out there that are saying a lot of things. But there is one voice that stands sure, and that is the voice of God. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, that you might say. I will never leave you nor forsake you, that you might say. That you might say. Take what he said and say it back to him. Take what he has said and say it back to him. Take what God has said and say it back to him. This is what your word says. Are you hearing me? And that is Hebrews 13 verse number 5 and 6. Let your conversations be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say 
the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. Not the economy, not the government, not politicians. The Lord is my helper. He's a very present help in times of need. So when, it, when you speak what he says, then the word is activated. When you're sick, say I'm healed. Are you hearing me? That's what the word of God says, right? He says in Joel 3 and verse number 10, let the sick say. Hello. I said, let the sick say. I am. Let the sick say. I am. Let the sick say. You say what he said. That's how you activate the word. That's how the word works for you. You just say what he said. And if he said you are healed, then let the sick say, I am healed. Yeah. Exodus 15, 26, I am the Lord that heals thee. Psalm 103, verse number 3, he forgives all your iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. Jeremiah 30, 17, for I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast. This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Deuteronomy 7, 15, the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none, none, none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Exodus 15, 26, and said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none, 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 of these diseases upon thee. Not COVID, not, not pneumonia, none. He says, I will put none, none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. <laughs> Lift your hands. I feel the anointing of healing flowing in this room. Just lift your hands. We're going to pray. Just sing that for me. He said it. I believe it. I want you just to release that in the atmosphere. If you believe. Lift it in the atmosphere. He said it. It is done. He said it. I believe it. He said it. It is done. He said it. Lift your hands all over this building. He said it.
God said it. Everybody in this room, you have an infirmity. You have a pain in your body. Make your way to this altar. Because he said it, believe it, it is done. Keep singing for me. If you have a pain in your body, if you have an infirmity, if you have an affliction, generational afflictions, family infirmities, headaches, backaches. God said it. Believe it. God said it. God wants to heal you tonight. Oh, do 
what he told me when I went to him, Pastor Nat. He says, I can't get out of this wheelchair. He says, because this leg cannot walk. And I said, do you believe what God said? And he said, I believe, but I still can't get out of this wheelchair. I said, well, if you believe what God said, you're coming out of this wheelchair. And, it, and I said, you are now going to start walking. And he said, well, I can't walk. I said, well, in the name of Jesus, you're going to walk. And he said to them, none will lack. You all remember that? He told them, none will lack. I feel strongly that God is wanting to break the spirit of lack off of his people. Okay. You all didn't hear that. I said, the spirit of lack is going to be broken off of you because he said it you believe it it is done it is so there will be no poor among you oh. it's the word of the Lord he said there will be no poor among you if you believe that God said it, and you believe it, I want you to run here quick, and I'm gonna lay my hand on you. When I lay my hand on you, the spirit of lack is gonna break off of you in the name of Jesus. Fight, break, break in the name of Jesus. Come quickly, 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 break in the name of Jesus. 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 Break. Mazokota, break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Break. Break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Not only are you gonna walk, but God is breaking off of you the spirit of lack. In the name of Jesus, fight the Son of the Living God. Break. Break in the name of Jesus. Lack go in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Break. 
young man. Young man. God is going to do something with you. You know, Pastor was praying this morning that God gives power, ability, enablement to create to produce wealth. The Lord says you have been called to be one of those. You are going to produce and to create wealth. I heard pastor say that God is going to raise kingdom financiers. People that will finance the kingdom people that will underwrite for the kingdom and I hear the spirit of the Lord say that he has given you that ability and that ability will be in him even as I speak prophetically over you they are creative ideas that is God is that God is about to give you they are concepts that God is going to unveil to you by revelation that are going to bring you into the status of a millionaire for the kingdom of God. He said it. I believe it. It is so. Oh, everybody give God a shout. totally in agreement because God said it. I just believe the word of the Lord. Lack broken. Lack broken. Lack broken. Lack broken. Lack broken. Lack broken. Broken. Lack. There will be no lack. None shall lack among you in the name of Jesus. None shall lack. None shall lack. None shall lack. In the name of Jesus. I mean, listen. I'm in agreement with what Pastor Natalie said. You said something. You know, when, when, when the mouthpieces of God are speaking, you pay attention. I have a keen ear to hear the voice of God. In the multitude of words, I can pick up the frequency of what God is saying and she said something either this morning maybe this afternoon I don't remember but I heard it that there is going to be debt cancellation okay there is going to be debt cancellation simply because God has said it. Listen to me carefully. And I'm telling you what I know. I, I, I don't even know if I should share it, if you, Dr. Carla, want to share it. But I remember God spoke a word to Dr. Carla concerning a particular debt. I'll, t I'll tell you what it is. It, 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 what are the school debt? School loan. How many of you know school loans? How many of you got school loans? You know, they tell you, the government says, oh yeah, I'm going to cancel it, I'm going to do that. They do nothing. But I remember the Lord spoke a word, I don't know, maybe a year ago, that he was going to cancel that debt. And she stood on the word. She stood on the word because God said it. She believed it. And I am here to tell you that as this woman stands here today, she got an email last week saying that her debt, wait, 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 you're clapping too quick. 
Now, I'm not talking about incy wincy debt. I'm not talking about 10,000, 20,000, 20,000. She got an email saying, Congrat <laughs> Congratulations. We have uh, reviewed your file and you are debt free. But hold on, hold on. The amount that now says zero used to say, a hundred and seventy three thousand hey! dollars. How many of you believe? How many of you believe? How many of you believe? God is gonna cancel your debts. I said he's gonna cancel your debts. I said he's gonna cancel your debts. your hand and say, Lord, I'm next. It's done. 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 God says it's done. God says, I said it. Believe it. I don't care what your debt is. There is no debt that is impossible for God. Hers was $173,000. Yours might be half a million. But I come to prophetically declare your debt is about to be canceled. If you believe that, give God a shout! It is you said, Do you believe it? for you, woman of God. I hear the Lord say that the enemy that you see today, you will see them again no more. Now and forevermore. You will see them again no more. You will see them again no more. Now and forevermore. The word of the Lord comes to you, woman of God, that this is the last day that you will contend with the enemy that has been contending with you. And you will see them no more. <coughs> now and forevermore. <coughs> like you've got a shot. oil comes upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God
strong. That the Spirit of God will guide you, direct you, lead you. And even in the night season, God will give you songs. God will wake you up. God will take you to the instrument. And as he takes you, you'll begin to play the song of the Spirit. The songs of the Spirit. Say it, the Spirit of the living God. It is so, and it cannot be otherwise. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken, and his zeal shall perform it. Somebody give God a shout. that is shut up in your bones the Lord says I am reassigning that fire for my glory that you will be a shining and a burning one for my glory saith the Lord for there is a fire that is shut up in your bones and God says I'm going to reassign that fire for my glory and everywhere you go, it will catch fire. It will catch fire. It will catch fire. Your tongue will be on fire. Your words will be like fire. Your eyes will be like fire. Mazaka telaba. Receive the fire. The fire. The fire. The fire. Lift your hands and give God a praise. Listen, we've run out of time, and I know this is a house where we can stay all night. But how many of you believe that what God has said, God is going to do it? How many of you believe that God has done it? Come here, sir. I want to lay my hands on you. A fresh anointing. The Bible says, the servant of all is the greatest of all. That even as you serve, the Lord says, I'm releasing the mantle of greatness upon you. But the greatness that God releases upon you will come as a result of your gentleness. Even as he spoke to David, and he said that your gentleness has made you great. May your gentleness make you great. Even in this time and in this season. There is a special grace that God has placed upon you. That through your gentleness, greatness will begin to emerge. In Jesus' name. Give God a shout of praise. Come on, warriors! Listen, we're getting ready to close. Pastor, come, I know you're coming. But how many of you feel extremely blessed tonight? How many of you feel like blessing the Lord with a seed? Okay. Why, why? The can clap kind of went down a little bit. How many of you feel like blessing the Lord with a seed? Okay. I'm going to give you an opportunity to bless the Lord tonight for everything that he has done with a seed. Amen. So go ahead and take your seed. Take your best seed tonight and come and give God a praise. Amen. I love you dangerously. I will see you again sooner than later. Come on, just give us something. Come on, us very quickly. Come on, she wants us to sow a good seed tonight, our very best seed. So as the worship team begins to wrap up. You said. She reminded me I need to pray for the musicians. Okay, I'm going to pray for the musicians. Thank you, Dr. Carla. I speak God's blessing over you. In the name of Jesus. New sounds. In the mighty name of Jesus. New sounds. The sounds of heaven. To be released through you and in you. The sounds that will shatter the darkness. Sounds that will cause devil, devils and demons to flee. 
in the name of Jesus, that as you blow that horn, the power of God will encapsulate the place in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ, the Son of the living God, a fresh anointing comes upon you in the name of Jesus, that everything God has said, it is so, and it cannot be otherwise. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken, and his zeal shall perform it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Go pray for the drummer. Can you for the drummer? All the way behind the <laughs> I pray God's grace over you. That the same anointing that is flowing in this room begins to permeate you as well. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everything that God has said concerning you, your family, your future, your destiny, your purpose. It is so, and it cannot be otherwise. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken and made his zeal perform it. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a final shout. Come on, has the, have the ushers taken it up? Come on, ushers, just take it up right now. Come on, worship team, just give us something right now. right now we're gonna seal what God has done not just tonight but what God did all day long I believe God has healed bodies I believe God has set people free I believe that debt has been canceled lack has been fought off of people's life God has done beyond what we expected so come on everybody in the room lift up your hand Lord we thank you we thank you for the woman of God we thank you for every word that proceeded out of her from the throne room of God because you said it we stand upon your word and it is done according to your will so we bless your name we give you all of our praise in Jesus' mighty name amen come on come on as you leave this place as you go take the spirit of God with you but we're gonna just praise our way out of this room so right now worship team right now Judah come on close this out with a powerful time of worship come on <laughs> 